Today is Monday, June 1st. Here's my opportunity for a smile today. Two city dwellers wanting to experience nature rent a kayak and take it to the lake. They get cold and build a fire in the kayak and it sinks. The moral of the story, you can't have a kayak and heat it too. Hmm. And this one was brought to you by a second anonymous jokester. I love that the desire for joy is spreading. And we need joy. When events happened to us, single events that happen, we, we tend to take that as, as something that doesn't really become a part of anything else. It's just an event in itself. And if it's wonderful, we are overjoyed if it's terrible, our reaction to it, well, it's bad. But we think that that event really has nothing to do with any other events. But that's not so. Things build in us. I want to read some excerpts to you from a New York Times opin opinion column that's written by Michelle Goldberg. See if you see how things tie together. Here's what she says. So many things make America combustible right now. Mass unemployment, a pandemic that's laid bare murderous health and economic inequalities, teenagers with little to do, and now police violence, right-wingers itching for a second civil war, and she says a president that's eager to pour gasoline on every fire. She says, Heather Ann Thompson, a historian at the University of Michigan and a Pulitzer Prize winner in 2016, said this, I think we're indeed in a moment where things are going to get a lot more tense before they get more peaceful. We're experiencing demonstrations across America since the terrible events that happened in Minneapolis like last week. These demonstrations were sparked by specific instances of police violence, but they also take place in a context of widespread health and economic devastation that's been bis disproportionately borne on people of color, especially those who are poor. Sociologists have studied collective behavior, urban unrest for decades. And I think it's safe to say that the consensus view is that it's never just about a precipitating event that results in the un unrest. According to Darnell Hunt, the Dean of Social Sciences at UCLA, he states this, it's always a collection of factors that make the situation ripe for collective behavior, unrest, and mobilization. Keith Ellison, who is Minnesota's Attorney General, after going running in Minneapolis recently, said, I feel a coiled sort of anxiousness ready to spring. Many people have been cooped up for two months, and so now they're in a different space, a different place. They're restless. Some of them have been unemployed. Some of them don't have rent money, and they're angry. They're frustrated and the frustration will likely build because the economic ruin from the pandemic is just beginning. Where people are broke and there doesn't appear to be any assistance, there's no leadership. There's no clarity about what is going to happen. This creates the conditions for anger, rage, desperation, and hopelessness, which can be a very volatile combination uh, Kianga Yamada Taylor, an assistant professor of African American studies at Princeton, said, I would not be at all surprised to see this kind of reaction elsewhere over the course of the next several months. And then my thoughts out here in Cresswell, Oregon, we all are experiencing unprecedented pressures and our stress is building. Events and issues that quickly rolled off us back in January cause elevated angst, fear, doubt, anger, and pain. This condition is, a re is as real a pandemic as COVID-19 could ever be. We, out here in Cresswell, 
may not be expressing our frustration by rioting or burning just as they're doing in, in Eugene a few miles north, but we nevertheless are hurting and our pain shows in our feelings and it pours out in our actions. Now is the perfect time for us to practice patience with ourselves and to give grace to those around us. Now is the time for us to admit the stress we're experiencing due to this pandemic. We need to become vulnerable enough to tell those around us that we aren't exactly at our best now. Just today, I apologized to a close friend and a leader at our church because I'd made a decision and taken actions concerning his area of ministry without communicating appropriately with him. Well, I don't think I would have done this under normal times. So I've asked him to forgive me and I have to forgive myself. I must practice patience with myself and hope that his graciousness towards me continues. Now's the time for us to pull together, not to pull apart. I want us to pray right now. Our Father in heaven, I want to pray for the communities in our nation that are experiencing such unrest. I want to pray for those people who are so hurt by the, uh, by the unjust events that have happened um, just lately in Minneapolis, but all around our country. I want to pray for those hurting families and for those people that feel hopeless. I also want to pray for business owners around the country who are now suffering the loss of having their um, ability to earn a living basically destroyed by others' anger. I want to pray for uh, our president. Um, I pray that, that he makes statements that pull us together rather than continuing to drive us apart. And I want to pray for, for our church and for our citizens here in Oregon, uh, in Cresswell, that we uh, don't take events as, as just being individual events, but that we realize that we're, we are experiencing our own pressures and our own struggles because of everything that's going on. And I pray, Father, that just as you have shown us grace, that that's what we give to each other. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for uh, watching today. I look forward to talking to you tomorrow.